Hi, in this video, I'll give you four pieces of advice on how to do well in a calculus class. The four pieces of advice come from four different aspects of learning calculus. The first aspect is studying skills. You will need an active style of studying. This is big. A lot of this video will be about this active studying. Number two, you need to solidify your prerequisite knowledge, trigonometry and algebra, especially algebra. Number three, the calculus itself. You need to master whatever calculus from this week right away, because next week you need that. And number four, technology. You want to master some form of technology so that you can check and preferably visualize your calculus. It could be a graphing calculator or a graphing website like Desmos or some advanced math software like Wolfram Alpha or MATLAB or Symbolab or your own programming using whatever language you're good at, C++ or Python. Let's go into details. First, studying skills. You want to be active when learning. If you're in a face-to-face -face class, Keep your brain active and stay ahead of the professor or teacher by at least one math step. Here's what I mean. Let's go back to algebra. Suppose the professor writes this on the board. Your brain should already be thinking, ooh, x equals two or x equals one. But then the professor finishes the equation. She doesn't write equals zero, but instead she writes equals negative 30. Then your brain needs to be thinking, oh, it's not x equals two or x equals one. Then your brain also needs to be thinking, I need to multiply this out. I need to foil that x minus two times x minus one. The professor will probably end up saying it anyway, but you need to be thinking it before your professor says it. Now, in an asynchronous online course, the learning will come from reading a book or reading the professor's postings on a discussion board or watching a video. Same thing, trying to anticipate the next thing the author of the book was gonna say or the next thing the professor was gonna say on the discussion board or in the video. By actively anticipating, your brain will be continuously comparing between what you think was gonna happen and what actually happens. If you anticipate one thing and the professor does something else, your brain will have to decide, was I wrong? Then three things could happen. One, maybe I was wrong. Then think, what happened? Why was I wrong? What did I miss? Number two, I was not wrong. The professor did the same thing as me, but it's just written down differently. Oh, well, that's great because now you recognize two different ways of writing the same thing. By the way, this will happen a lot in calculus. You may have remembered that it happened a lot in trigonometry as well, that two answers are the same, but they just look different on paper. Being able to recognize that two things that look different or in fact mathematically the same, that's an important calculus skill. And three, I was not wrong. The professor just chose to go a different way. That's great too, because now you know there are two different ways of doing things. Also, when the professor chose to go a different way, you may want to think about why. If there are two different ways, A and B, why did the professor choose B and not A? Is it just random or is there a reason for it? Is there something in this particular problem that makes B better than A? These are the things worth thinking about. In that sense, if you are actively engaged in your learning, an asynchronous online class is better for you. You would prefer an online class because you can pause the video, stop the reading while you think about these things. But of course that requires discipline in doing active learning all the time. 
So inversely, if you don't have that kind of discipline, then a face-to-face -face class is better because then there will be a teacher or professor or a recitation TA to force you to be actively engaged. Let me tell you a story about another professor at my college. He teaches calculus and I sat in on his class one day. He asked the class a question and the class was just being totally quiet. I'm sure you've been to a class like that. You know what he did? He pulled up a chair, sat down and waited for the class to answer. A very long, awkward silence follows. Finally, one student answered the question. Then my friend resumed class. There's a point to that approach. You have to be actively engaged if you want to learn calculus, and my friend was actively enforcing it. Well, that's true of any math really, but especially calculus, because calculus pulls in math from every little corner of every kind of math you've learned before. And that leads us to advice number two. You need to review and become completely fluent at the prerequisite material, trigonometry, and especially algebra. Here's a meme I found on the internet. Yep, being good at algebra is vital. When students lose points on a calculus test, most are caused by failure of algebra. When you took algebra, let's say you make a small algebra mistake, then you lose a few points, no big deal. Most people can still get A and B with a few points taken off here and there. But in calculus, if you make a small algebra mistake, it snowballs and grows into a huge hole in your calculus answer that causes you to lose a lot of points. Here's my advice in terms of algebra. Pay attention to details. Watch the signs. Be careful with subtractions and negatives. Watch the order of operations, PEMDAS. Know the rules of exponents. Know the special products and the things they're used for, namely completing the square and rationalizing a fraction where either the numerator or the denominator has two radicals. In terms of trigonometry, Know the relationship between all six trig functions, the formulas for the sum and difference of angles, the double angle formulas, and the half angle formulas. That's advice number two. Now advice number three. Whatever calculus you're learning, get good at it right away. Whatever you're learning this week, get good at it this week. That's the reason why most calculus teachers and professors give massive amount of exercises. And that is because you need massive amount of practice to master things quickly. Just as a calculus problem can call on any kind of algebra that you've learned before, it can also call on any kind of calculus that you've just learned. So let's say if a calculus problem has five steps. And step one requires some algebra. Step two requires some calculus from last week. Well, if you're bad at algebra or you haven't learned the calculus from last week, you can't even get started on this problem. You may have understood today's lesson, but it's down here in step three, four, and five, and you can't get to them. And that causes you to lose practice on today's lesson, and that will lead to even more problems down the road. Finally, advice number four is to master some sort of technology that helps you check your answers and visualize the problems. First, you want to graph things. Either use your graphing calculator or use desmos.com or some websites like that. You also want to be able to compute things out numerically. You can use your same graphing calculator and desmos to do that too. And if you know how to program and can write codes, even better. There's a beneficial side effect to using technology to help visualize and check your calculus. And it is this. In the process of translating the calculus into something you can check by using technology, 
you're actually gaining a deeper understanding of calculus and getting better at it. All right, so those are my four pieces of advice. If you're only gonna do one, do the part about active learning. Hope that helps. Like, share, and subscribe for more contents. And thanks for watching. Bye.